Hey y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. We've got a jam-packed show today, episode 257, and I'm going to say something that I haven't been able to say very often. We have a brand new night vision scope review to bring you today. Jason, uh, the owner of Outdoor Legacy Gear, as always, here to help out with the review. What's going on? And hey, we don't get too many new night vision optics, so it's good to kind of switch it up a little bit, isn't it? We don't, and uh, I've already given them a sneak peek. As soon as you said it, I, I held this thing <laughs> up. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't yeah. stand not to. Yeah, guys, this is exciting. Uh, night vision scopes uh, are something that Hans and I really do like. It's I know we mm -hmm. both cut our teeth on night vision scopes, getting into the night hunting world. So uh, they really have a soft. Uh, we have a soft place in our heart for for good quality digital yeah. night vision optics. Uh, they're affordable. Uh, they are, you know, definitely more affordable than thermal. They're a good place for people to start and see if night mm -hmm. hunting is something they want to do. And we have got one today and we will talk a little bit about that. Actually, we're going to talk a whole lot about that. We're going to show you some footage and stuff out of it. I do want to say also there's another optic. And by the way, guys, uh, this is from AGM. If you didn't see that logo there, uh, we're going to talk about another AGM product here very soon in the next week or two, and that's going to be the AGM Sidewinder. And mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, that unit was announced at SHOT Show. Uh, that is a, a thermal handheld monocular line. There's going to be four different units, two or 384 resolution, two or 640. Uh, Hans and I had the ability, uh, the chance to test those out last fall before they were announced, really, really liked them, really excited. Yep. We've had them back in our hands again uh, after SHOT Show, been using them. Uh, you know, Hans, myself, Ashley, we really like these things. So we're going to mm -hmm. be reviewing. I think we're going to start with the 384 models probably first, but going to be reviewing those uh, in the next week or two. So y'all stick around for that. I think that would pair very, very yeah. well with a digital night vision scope. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Anyway. So the Neath, the Neath uh, is what we're reviewing today, the, the AGM uh, Neath. It's a night vision scope new. It was announced at SHOT Show. Uh, we've talked about it previously on the show. Uh, we haven't given it a, lo a lot of time, only because we waited to get them in our hands to test them. Uh, and the reason why we do that is we would be able to give you uh, our honest assessment of every optic that we uh, have, that we hunt with. We hunt with everything, me, Jason, uh, and Ashley. And, and I know Jason and Ashley I have been doing quite a bit. They've had a lot of activity. Uh, Jason's had a, a, a bunch of hogs. A Ashley's has a bunch of hogs. And I finally have some hogs back. I, I guess I haven't, didn't shoot all of them in Van Zandt <laughs> County. But got a, I've had a few here lately, been able to get reviewed. But we've got a lot of video through this optic to show you. But before we jump into it, Jason's going to give you the specs. We'll, we'll show video, the walk around, everything that we do. But if you're interested in buying a new night vision or thermal optic, Give us a call, 877-350-1818, outdoorlegacygear.com. The information, if you're watching, uh, is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you're listening on the audio-only version, again, 877-350-1818, outdoorlegacygear.com. You can talk to me, Jason, or Ashley, and we'd be glad to help you out. Uh, now that we got the business out of the way, Jason, let's run down the specs, and then we'll get to show this brand-new night vision optic from AGM. Okay, one more piece of business, and that is uh, by the <laughs> no, time. No, I've already cut that, business. Yeah, yeah no. I know. One, one more business. Uh, <laughs> this unit uh, should be knock on wood uh, in a stock in our warehouse the day that this releases on Thursday. Uh, if it is not, then give us a call, drop us an email. Yep. I should be there within a day or two. Uh, I, I talked to. Uh, AGM about this unit and it was supposed to be shipping uh, may have already shipped not sure uh, it's supposed to be there before Thursday so hopefully it will be uh, this is the release week of this unit uh, the this week that we're talking about it and mm -hmm. so we are excited uh, one more quick thing I want to mention you know this unit and I didn't even remember this that Hans didn't get to see, see this unit but I got to test this unit last fall I had it for a long time, and I think I forgot. Uh, it, Hans and I were trading some scopes. I forgot to send it to him. Uh, but I got to use this for a good while last year. It was just a prototype version, and I was really impressed with it then, and we were really thankful 
to get them back after SHOT Show once it was mm -hmm. official to be able to test it again. And I, I got to tell you, there's some things about it I'd kind of forgotten uh, about how good some of the, the features are. We're going to get into all that. So this is an exciting unit. Hans has got it here. He's going to show it. He's going to do a walk around, mm -hmm. kind of show you what all comes with it here uh, in just a little bit. But I'm going to go over these specs as quickly as we can here. It is the AGM Neath DS32 4MP. I hope I said that right, uh, Hans. I think it is <laughs> DS32. It is. That's Looking a 32 the box millimeter. Right now. That's it. Yeah, 32 yeah. millimeter objective. All right, this unit is $799. It is a 2.5 power base magnification, and it does go up to a 20 power with digital zoom. It's got a... Mm, I'm seeing something we're missing here, Hans, um, on, on the list. I just it's see impossible it right because it's, I came I, up with the list. I and know it's impossible it that I miss anything. Impossible, so but shame on you. I, I need to know the resolution of this unit. Can you look that up while I'm going down the list? Yeah, um, I can. It, it, okay. It is a 1920 by 1080 OLED display screen. Uh, it has video and audio recording. It has Wi-Fi built in so that you can use a smartphone streaming app with it. Uh, we'll talk about some of this stuff in a little more detail in a little bit. It has a built-in IR light. That is something that, uh, well, again, we'll talk about more pretty interesting. It has both full color daytime mode as well as the black and white nighttime mode. It does include picture-in-picture -picture with the reticle uh, in both uh, the picture-in-picture -picture and the main screen at the same time. It has got multiple rifle profiles and reticles, so you can zero it for multiple different guns. It has recoil-activated video recording, and you can actually go into the menu, and you can set if you want it to record for 7, 10, or 15 seconds before you shoot. So basically, it's recording all the time when that's on, and then it backs the recording up and so 7 10 or 15 seconds before you shot it will save and it will again save 7 10 or 15 seconds after the shot so you know the longest clip it would have would be mm -hmm. 30 seconds pretty cool but if you don't yeah. want to use that you can always just you know press the button start the recording manually that's what we normally do but that is built in um, one of our favorite features got to tell you guys it's an 18650, fully removable, fully rechargeable battery. Thank you, AGM, for listening to your customers and to the market. People want 18650s, and they have delivered in yet another optic. Uh, we got four hours of runtime with the included 18650. Yeah, by the way, there are two 18650 mm -hmm. uh, batteries included with the scope using their 18650. Uh, we got four hours, a little over four hours of full runtime uh, with the IR that's built into it turned on. So if you turn that IR off, you're going to probably get a little longer runtime. I think AGM says it's closer to five hours. We did not test it in just the daytime mode. So again, I'd say worst case scenario as we tested it with the IR was four hours. And so we were very happy with that. Obviously, that might come down in colder temperatures if you're using the shot activated video and some of those things. But very good battery life, again, for, for one 18650. Another very interesting uh, spec here is the working temperature is down to negative 22 degrees. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. it is spring in Texas, and it is way closer to 90 and 100 than it is to zero or negative 22. <laughs> so we, we did not. My, my freezer doesn't even go that <laughs> cold. So I've got yeah. I've got this big, nice. Uh, fairly new deep freeze, and it, mm. it, it it's called sub zero, but it does not go to negative twenty two. So, I have no way of testing mm. that. I kind of think you are delivering information, but half of me thinks you are kind of bragging too that you have a sub zero <laughs> freezer. So, go ahead. I, I don't think that <laughs> negative one counts. For much, but yeah. Mm. yeah, let me. I got it during. I got it r right after the uh, pandemic. Is the only thing I could get. So, uh, <laughs> all right, it's an IPS six seven rating, which means it's fully dust proof. Fully waterproof, submersible to three foot for 30 minutes. So don't worry about a little bit of rain. 
uh, field of view is going to be 42 and a half feet horizontally at 100 yards. It weighs 25 ounces with the battery and the mount. Uh, speaking of the mount, uh, it, like all the other American defense units, uh, it's awesome, even on a $799 digital night vision scope. It includes our favorite, the American Defense Manufacturing mm -hmm. QD, Quick Detach Mount. Uh, we cannot say enough good things about American Defense. This is an American-made mount with a lifetime warranty from American Defense uh, on this mount against defects. It is a return to zero. If you have the mount properly tensioned and you move it from one rifle to another, you don't change the tension and you put it back in the same Picatinny slot, it will mm -hmm. return to zero every time. Very, very nice mount. Uh, these are the kind of mounts that we sell for other brands of thermals that don't include them for $200, okay? Um, mm -hmm. That's a big, big deal right. that you're getting a mount like this included for free uh, with the scope. Uh, it has, uh, as mentioned, the built-in IR illuminator, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in some detail. I'm going to say this. I think the specs are wrong on AGM's website because it says 400 yard is what the detection range on that. We're going to say it's going to be 125 to 150 yards max. Uh, we're going to say really the good, good usable range of the built-in IR is 100 yards. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we'll get into some more detail, but I would say 125, maybe 150. With that's a, that's a dark night, no ambient light, no moon, no you know. Get more, you're going to see further. Again, we'll get into some more details, but the little bitty built-in IR here on this, let's just say 100, 125 yards is, is very reasonable. And mm -hmm. then it does come with a three-year warranty. Want to be clear. Uh, guys, there is some confusion. People know that AGM moved uh, some of their warranties up to five years in January of 2023, but that is for their 384 and 640 thermal optics. Their 256, the, the, the sub-entry level thermal optics are still three years. The digital is still three years. So it's a mm -hmm. long time, but it's not five years. Just wanted to be clear on that. Yep. Hans, let's do the walk around. Let's talk about this thing. Yeah, and one of the specs I forgot, resolution, it's 2560 by 1440. I'm, so, I'm going to write that down here on my notes. Yeah. It's, it's not here, executive producer. 2560 <laughs> by what? 1440. 1440. Yeah, so 25, yeah, yeah. I, I, so it's I higher believe, than HD resolution. Yeah, I believe it's four megapixels because uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the... Yeah, uh, the model name. It's the Neath DS32 4MP, and do a little mm -hmm. bit of math. I think it's four megapixels. So that is, uh, I'm gonna while you're doing this, I'm gonna do a little bit of math. But I think this is, oh, yes. I know, I think this is twice the resolution of HD. So jump yep. on into it, do the walk around, and I'm gonna do a little bit of fuzzy East Texas math. Well, you kind of stole my thunder because the one exciting thing that you get to talk about what comes with this optic is an extra 18650 battery. So, but you already <laughs> mentioned it. So it's like you cut to you back to you. No. Uh, so in the bag, uh, you're going to get two 18650 batteries they are fully removable, fully rechargeable. We've talked about it before. 18650 batteries are very easy to find, very inexpensive. You can have a whole pocket full of them. We just love them. And, and this scope obviously comes with two of them comes with a charging base. Uh, I have noticed, Jason, and you probably noticed this too, when you're, you cannot charge this optic by just plugging it into a wall charger. You have got to charge the 18650 battery in the cradle. So in a cradle, it cannot charge in the scope itself. Uh, just so everybody knows but, that. But tell it what it does when you're, when you plug in that, that USB. Yeah, when you plug in the USB, th that's basically for getting uh, videos off the optic onto your computer. Uh, and that's why it does come with that cord. It comes but, with a yeah. USB cord. But it'll also cord. power the unit. You can also run an external battery pack. Uh, any re rechargeable external, external battery pack you can run off these scopes. And pretty much all night vision thermal scopes. I hate lumping them all together. But mm -hmm. most everything that we talk about will run on an external battery pack. 
Um, but it's like, you know, you got 18650, so why even mess with trying to find a place to strap that on? But yes, it does It does come with that. It comes with a cord, cradle, two batteries, a nice bag. So uh, here's a walk around. We talked about the 18650, this little top uh, turret looking thing. That's where the battery uh, goes into. Uh, Y'all, if you've seen the AGM varmints, this is, and that's a thermal scope. This is an AGM varmint form factor, but it's night vision optics. This is what they basically put it into. So uh, on the top, that's your eight, uh, your 850 nanometer IR light right there on top. Uh, You've got a 32 uh, millimeter uh, objective lens. You've got your focus, uh, uh, your focus ring right here by the objective lens. You got your eyepiece diopter focus here, rubber uh, eye cup that is removable if you want to do so. Uh, obviously, the ADM mount, which uh, when it comes in, it will not be installed. You just screw a couple screws down in the bottom of it to get it mounted. Very easy to do, one throw lever. And then you've got your power button, you got your menu buttons, uh, power. You've got a, a kind of a wheel that you can roll right here, uh, and that's for increasing and decreasing magnification. Also, when you get in your menu, that's how you go to different uh, menu functions. So very basic, simple design, Jason, something that we're familiar with. If you've seen, again, the AGM Varmint thermal scope, uh, and they just kind of sandwiched it in here, but very small uh, night vision scope with a built-in IR light. That's really what got me most excited about testing this was the fact that you can have this whole package and the light that you needed uh, right there in one, and you didn't have to worry about mounting a separate um, IR light. Now, sounds great, but we also have got some things that we got to talk about uh, in terms of the IR light power, you know, the power of the IR, IR light detection range. Uh, but that is the walk around of the scope. Uh- I want to mention one thing there. Uh, I've already, you know, I know there's going to be questions about this. Uh, Hans mentioned that the American Defense mount will most likely not be installed when you get the optic. Uh, That is the way that uh, most manufacturers ship their mounts is they're not uh, installed. And AGM has, has moved to that with these American Defense mounts on their thermals and their night vision optics. And people get really concerned about installing that and knowing the proper, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, torque to put on that. I'm going to tell you how Hans and I do it. We use the little 90 degree angle, Uh uh, you know, um, Allen wrench and we just go over thumb tight and it has never failed us in Uh 10 years. However, if you're one of these guys that you've got to use a torque wrench and you've got to know, uh, generally American defense says 20 to 24 pounds Mm -hmm. of torque is what you want. Uh, We don't own a torque wrench. I don't know how to use (sighs) one, Uh, but, but if you, if you need to know, that's what they're suggesting American defense does. But again, if, if you're like us, and uh, you don't own one of those, just use a little right angle, get it good thumb tight, or it feels you know good but not too tight, and you should be good to go. Yeah, so and, go and people will talk about using Loctite, blue Loctite or something like that. I mean, you and I, we don't use anything on it, on the threads, no. but we're, we're constantly changing thing out, things out. But, we are. And, uh, and I mean, we are. You, Real quick, when it comes to Loctite, which I know sometimes they include some, uh, my opinion on it is less is more a drop (laughs) a drop is probably more than you need um ask me because um i had to drill out not (sighs) not what i did uh what a a customer did i drilled out a screw out of a six thousand dollar scope and cut an american defense mount into multiple pieces (sighs) getting it off because he thought that a little bit of loctite meant that you should use a whole lot of loctite Mm -hmm. and it would be better so anyway Mm -hmm. with that said very sparing on the loctite all right Mm -hmm. let's talk about this scope let's get um let's get a couple things out of the way First of all, we really, really like this unit. we got a lot of good things to say, but Hans and I are the kind of guys that let's talk about the bad news first. Let's talk about the things that we don't like first and get past that uh, because every scope, as we always say, there's no perfect scope. There's always room for improvement. Uh, So what we do on this show is we try to tell you um, the things that we think 
could be improved, the things that could be better. Uh, doesn't mean that we think you shouldn't buy the scope. If we thought that, I'll be honest, we wouldn't review it. Uh, that's kind of our policy. If we think it's a no-go, we just choose not to review it. Uh, we love this optic. Uh, we think it's got um, a, a big, huge potential in front of it with customers, but we do mm. have a couple small things we want to talk about. Uh, I'm going to jump on this list, Hans, and uh -huh. uh, I'm going to I'm going to mention a couple things that that I noticed. So one is this is very minor, but this is just something that that I I noticed. So the power button functions as both a power button, but also as a um, we can turn the display off. It's like a standby mode. The unit's still mm -hmm. on, but it turns the display off and saves power. Really nice. All you got to do is just real quick, press the button in, display goes off, press the button in, display comes on. It's instant. Very nice. One thing I don't like, and I think this could hopefully be changed in firmware, is that if you're, you know, it's at night and you're feeling around and if you're like me, what you should do is go one, two, three. This is the third button. Leave it alone. But I reach up there and I don't go one, two, three. And I feel this button. I think it's the middle button and I press it. That is on me. I fully admit it. If you press that button, because I think it's the menu button or something, you know, I'm trying to hold it in. So yeah. if you press that button for more than about one second, it puts the scope into the shutdown sequence, which is three, two, one. You cannot stop it. Most other scopes operate in the function of press and hold the button till you see three, two, one, then let go and it shuts down. If you stop at any point in the three, two, one, the scope doesn't shut down. So what I actually had my, I had the problem of, I was recording video of some hogs on two occasions, reach up here, press this button and it shuts down. So you lose those recordings of those, of what's going on at that time. So just a little bit of a, a pain, minor detail. Again, if you're, if you're smarter than me, you'll you'll feel the three easy buttons and you'll go, don't mess with that one. But I, you know. I, I so, had that happen to me too. And you you accidentally press it and you're like, you see it counting down three, two, one. You're like, oh crap, abort, abort, abort. Yeah, there's no <laughs> abort. <laughs> there's no abort. I mean, it comes yeah. on quick, but it's kind of a yeah. pain. All right. Yeah, I'm going to exactly. mention something else. This is for, um, for our salesman, Ashley. He is left-handed. Had I known that, I probably wouldn't have hired him. Yeah, uh, I just gosh. did not know. Yeah, I say hey, I've got a left-handed son. Also, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, I can't help it. So, listen, he, he made the comment that as a left-handed person, uh, he's got to reach up, you know, over to 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 mess with the buttons. What's most comfortable for for him? But he found himself putting his hand in front of this IR. I'm holding mm -hmm. this up and I think you can see that. So he's really got to try to get back and, and not hit the IR. So again, we'd like to talk about it. I know there's you know left-handed shooters out there and that is a concern. So if you're a lefty, uh, you're just going to have to to know that you're going to have to reach over yep. to, to mess with those buttons. And then um, let me see here. I know we got a couple other things. Well, That's getting like, on that block in the IR, yeah. you're like I'll, I'll okay. talk about, uh, cause I've got this on a, on a rail right now to demonstrate, but you've got the IR light right here on top of the optic, just above the, uh, uh, objective lens. Now to focus the optic, you've got to turn this, this wheel or this dial here in front mm -hmm. and to do so. And I've got it on a, on a upper the, or a rail that I would use for testing. But to do that, it's difficult to focus it without getting your hand in the way of the IR light. So if you see, if you normally, you just put your hand on top and kind of turn it, well, you're completely blocking the IR light. So it does you no good to focus if you can't see what you're focusing. So you almost, it's, you almost got to put your fingers under here, uh, under the uh, mm -hmm. focus adjustment and kind of turn it. And it's just, uh, it, it, it's a, it's difficult sometimes. I'll just okay, say so I'm going to say two things to this. One, here's a quick fix. Um, and, and look, I don't know if somebody's already making these. If they're not, they yeah. will. Th yeah. These little things, I think they call them like cattails or something. And it's basically a little lever, you know, that'll go around this, this objective lens focus. And it'll have a little lever sticking off here to the mm -hmm. side. And then you can reach up here and use your finger, fine tune, adjust that. That will solve that. I'm sure, again, if that's not already being made, somebody will. Those things oh, are yeah. normally very cheap. 
Uh, I know some guys tell me they use a uh, a black zip tie, and they'll put that thing around there, uh, a pretty a heavy idea. duty one, and yeah, they'll just cut idea. that off where they've got maybe you know a, a half inch or so of that zip tie, and they'll just reach up there and they can do the exact same thing, and it mm -hmm. you know cost a nickel or less. So that's an option. Now now listen, uh, uh, while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and talk about the IR, uh, and we can kind of be done with this. As we've already said, realistically, 100, 125 yards is what you're going to get out of this built-in IR, 150 max. Again, we're talking, you know, dark night. If you're, well, let me back up. We'll, again, we'll, we'll talk about this when we get done with our likes and dislikes. For some people, that may be all you need. But for most people, we are going to highly advise that you couple this scope with something uh, good IR like the Sniper Hog Lights. Uh, that is our go-to brand. Uh, we have been using and selling Sniper Hog Lights for years. Fantastic mm. company here in Texas. They make some of the best and brightest um, IR lights on the market. They have an unbeatable customer service, and we sell their lights. We, they're the brand that we have chosen uh, after all of our testing. We really, really like Sniper Hog Lights. Mm -hmm. I think if you use this with something like a 50 LRX or a 66 LRX, uh, you are going to see a whole new scope. I mean, it is going, the, the potential that this scope has is unbelievable with really, really good, bright okay. IR light. Now, if you're, go ahead. Well, it's going to say, and, and to be so, and I've, Jason, uh, I've got a 50 LRX sniper hog light in my hand right now. Uh, and also I've got the, the scope. So if you hold up this IR light versus the IR light on the optic, it, right. you know, it's quite a bit bigger and you would expect quite an a IR bit. light. That's, <laughs> yeah. You would expect the, the small IR light to definitely not be, something that's going to see as far obviously as some of the other IR lights that come with optics or even the sniper hog light. But um, that's the price you pay for having that compact design of having it in there. But, you know, look at the size difference. I mean, you would well, definitely expect well, yeah, to and, be much better. And we'll be honest here. Even on all the other digital night vision optics, every single digital night vision optic we sell, um, not everybody does this, but I would say this, most guys that are really wanting to get out there and do much past hundred yards, 150, they end up buying a sniper hog light mm -hmm. or another brighter, better IR than what comes with it. So that's not super uncommon anyway, but we yep. definitely advise that. I'm telling you, there is so much potential packed into this unit, uh, when it gets a lot of good IR light. And there's some smaller other IRs out there. Uh, we've tested some of them that will will push this out a little further. But if you're going to spend a hundred bucks, my advice is to go ahead and spend 175, 185, and go with a light that is going to just unlock the potential uh -huh. of this. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's kind of our our talk on that. And then. Another thing, th these are going to be two, two minor, minor things, but again, that's what we do, guys. We nitpick this for you so that you kind of know. Um, one is in the video playback. I don't think when you're watching the videos you record, which Hans is going to have shown some of those here uh, on this show, you're not getting a good idea of what the image really looks like. The image looks way darker on the video playback than it does when you're looking through the optic. And that was something that really surprised us because like it looked so good and not that it mm -hmm. looked bad, but it just didn't look near as good. We were pretty surprised yeah. like, oh, wow, uh, yep. it looked way better when I was out there in the field. So I think that's not great. Even sometimes if you pay really close attention to analyze the video, sometimes you'll see these lines um, in the video, uh, they'll usually be horizontal, but I've even seen them vertical where it's kind of this wavy pattern mm -hmm. going through there. I think it's something to do with maybe the IR light. I I'm not seeing that, uh, especially with like the sniper hog light. I'm not seeing that while I'm using the unit, but it's, it's very noticeable on some of the videos. So I don't know. Again, if you right. see that, you get a good sniper hog light, you're not going to see that in, in person. And then the very last thing, and I, we got to get through these because you ought to see the likes over here. Okay, this column is <laughs> way bigger than this. Um, this right here, I'm banging this around. Okay, this is your, I, I'm scrolling this little wheel. I don't know if you can see this on camera. 
that is your your zoom it's really cool so you can just go from you know two and a half five ten twenty power as you roll that up and down now that is very sensitive. I mean, it, it clicks. You can feel it clicking. But when you reach up and, and you bump this, you're going to zoom up. And a lot of times, you, you'll like, don't even know you've bumped it. And you look to the scope and you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? It's all <laughs> zoomed up and grainy. Right. Well, that's because it's been, you know, just bumped and it's gone up one, two, three, four times. So that's something that I, I, I don't know. I wish it maybe, I mean, it's got little clicks. I just maybe wish it was a mm -hmm. little harder to turn I, I don't know I, it's just one thing i noticed is that i'll sometimes reach up to zoom up one time and it goes boom boom you know it's two yeah. two clicks up so i just yeah. think the sensitivity is a little much again nitpicking guys but but that's that's what we're here to do and hans do you have anything else on your your list there on the dislikes um no we just talked about the power button and the wheel uh, being yep. a little sensitive. So yep. no, that's it. Let's talk about the likes and, and there are a lot of likes and I'll, that's I'll start out by saying this picture image is very good. Y'all, no, um, yeah. it performs better than what the resolution says on paper. I will say that. I don't want to oh, say it's, yeah. I don't want to say that it's better than a 4k. I don't, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people dissecting this. It's, there are a lot of 4k resolution optics out there. It, this optic holds its own and performs better than the numbers on the paper. I'll say that. I think that is a very fair thing to say. And I think we're going to have to rein in our salesman <laughs> Ashley because he's been out running it beside a bunch of 4K optics and he's he's jumping up and down for this knee. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I would what Han said when you put this next to a 4K unit, I think you're just going to be surprised. Um, we, we, we actually, this is not a joke. We actually questioned this 2560 <laughs> by 1440 resolution. We, we had to go back to be sure that's really what it was because it was outperforming what we thought that it should at that resolution. Mm -hmm. So it is really, really good yep. image quality. Also, I think if you are using this for short range uh, hunting, like rat killing, uh, coon, possum, Anything, it really, any type of hunting, primarily under 100 yards, I think you've got a very nice compact optic with a built-in laser rangefinder that you don't have to add on a bulky IR light to the side of the rifle. So I think for short range with the built-in IR, I think it's a very nice sized optic that you can mm -hmm. run uh, very comfortably on a, on an AR style rifle, uh, you know, and, and it's going to be something that's uh, going to be a light, compact optic for you. So I'll, I'll say that as well. Yeah, I think that there's, I've got a bunch of stuff, guys. We're going to run out of time because we really want to talk about the scope. So I'm going to try to go through this. Um, again, you're getting an American defense mount on this mm. uh, included in the box. Like I said, most of the time these mounts cost a couple mm. hundred dollars. The mm. least that you're going to get these mounts uh, is going to be, you know, a hundred bucks or more. And yeah. so that's a big deal on an $800 scope, $799. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Picture in picture. Uh, this is the only digital night vision optic uh, that we're aware of right now of any mm -hmm. quality under, well, well under, you know, $1,000 that has picture in picture. Uh, that's a big deal to a lot of people. Uh, I'll tell you something that a, a lot of guys are going to be excited about, and I'm going to tell you why is that this unit has Wi-Fi for streaming to a smartphone app. Mm -hmm. Hans and I are not big Wi-Fi streaming guys. We don't use that much. But I'm going to tell you why I think it is nice to mm -hmm. have on these kind of optics and, and what I've heard so many, so many uh, customers in the past, the reason they want it, and I get it. As a father, a lot of people, and Hans mm -hmm. knows this, we're taking our kids out on these units and we're teaching them to shoot, yep. whether it's night hunting or whether it's daytime deer hunting because it's full color uh, and it's really nice. You can record the hunt, you know, the, the shot inside of there. So that is really, really nice. But with a kid, 
uh, it's nice if you've got Wi-Fi and you're able to see what they're seeing while they're doing it. And that way you can see, make sure they're even on the right animal, you know, yeah. no, we're, we're, we're shooting this doe over exactly. here, not this buck, <laughs> exactly. or, you know, so, so it's, it's nice to know what they're mm -hmm. looking at. And that's, so again, something that is built into this is, is the Wi-Fi for the smartphone app. Um, the 18650 batteries, obviously that's a huge deal. Hans and I cannot talk enough about how much we like 18650 batteries. The fact that it comes with two and a charger, you're good to go right out of the box. But if you need more, man, they're, they're very affordable. I mean, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks for a very good rechargeable 18650. And you know, that that's, that's just cheap long, mm -hmm. long run times. And then I'm going to say this, uh, there's, there's two more things about this unit that I just, I, I think we can't spend enough time on, but I know we're already running out of time. One of those is the low temperature rating. This thing mm -hmm. is rated to negative 22. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't know of another thermal or night vision optic that's rated to negative 22. There may be something out there, but I can tell you this, uh, there's not another uh, digital night vision optic. This is the I'm only night vision. The only other one would be the AGM adder, which is minus 22. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, some of the digital night vision optics are, are, are rated for 32 uh, above. <laughs> and so positive 32, you know, some are down in there, the teens, but but negative 22 is, is crazy. So if it really holds up to that, uh, which I expect that it will, that's going to be, be really, really good for our, our northern uh, customers. And then mm. this is something we have not touched on at all, and it is huge. So I'm going to, Hans, I'm going to roll out of, this is, this is our likes, I'm going to end with this, but I think we need to roll on into what this unit is capable of. Yep. And that is the low light, full color capabilities. So um, it is unreal what this mm -hmm. unit will do in what your human eye says yeah. is dark. Yeah. Um, an yeah. example of this, Ashley was texting us the other night and he was sitting on a stand watching some hogs in the daylight. And as it got dark, it got to the point that he could no longer see them with his naked eye and the scope, it's still full color. I mean, beautiful. And he is yeah. going nuts, blowing our phones up like, guys, you're not going to believe this. And so I actually went out and we're talking about we're past what would be legal shooting light for, for deer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fully legal for hogs or coyotes or varmints, but, but not legal for deer. And I'm looking down there and at about 85 yards, I've got a black Angus bull that I cannot see. And he's down there by the corrals. And, and I mean, it's just, again, everything is just I'm straining with my eyes. I pull up this neath in daytime mode and he is not just there in full color. It's fantastic image quality. <laughs> and I look down there in this same condition of 400 plus yards. And there's two white tailed deer standing down there full color. I can see them. This thing, I don't know what this sensor's got in it, but it is pulling in some light that is amazing. Uh, I want to mention real quick, it's got some other features in here. So it does have full color daytime. It has full color nighttime. It has mm -hmm. another sense uh, uh, setting that is auto sensing, whether it's daytime or nighttime. It's actually pretty cool. Um, when it gets dark enough, it just automatically switches over to the nighttime mode, which I, mean, I thought that's a huge deal, but I thought it was kind of cool. It's got a fourth feature in there that it, or a mode that um, it says that it uh, helps in fog, but I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. And we haven't had any fog, so I haven't mm -hmm. been able to test that. But that's mm -hmm. a mode that's in there. Whether it does anything or not, we can't say. We're not gonna not gonna uh, hang our hat on anything there. But that that mode is in there, so that'll be something kind of cool to test out. Yep. So, who it's good for? And we'll run through this real quick. I think anybody and uh, anybody that wants a night vision scope, pretty much anybody that wants a night vision scope, if you're wanting something short range, I think it's perfect. If you're wanting something long range. I think it's perfect with a right aftermarket, you know, IR light, like a sniper hog light. 
this thing has a lot of features, a lot of capabilities with the video and audio recording, picture in picture, low temperature rating, which solves a problem for a lot of guys like Jason said up north. Um, so it, the magnification level two, it's a two and a half to 20 power with eight times digital zoom. Uh, and this is going to be something that a, a good generic starting point with magnification that if you're hog hunting, coyote hunting, uh, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. But uh, again, under 100 yards with the standard IR light that comes included or, or mounted or, you know, permanently integrated in the scope. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, shooting past that with an extended IR light, I mean, it depends on the light, <laughs> really. Anywhere from, you know, 400 to with the Coyote Cannon sniper hog light, uh, you can see out to 1,000 yards. Now, you're not going to want to shoot that far, uh, but you can definitely see a very long ways with these sniper hog lights. Um, did I miss anybody else who is good for no, me? You think I, of I don't else? think so. I mean, I do think the two and a half power, it's a little bit of a one size fits all. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think two and a half and three power are really the happy medium for mm -hmm. guys that want to hog hunt or coyote hunt. Uh, I will say one thing about when you zoom this up, I mean, guys, I mean, if, if you're familiar with digital night vision, you already know this, but if not, it, you're digitally zooming. So you lose resolution every time you zoom. I think going from your base mag of two and a half power to, to the mm -hmm. next step of five power, you don't lose much. It's still really, really good mm -hmm. image quality at that point. When you take that next step to 10, you really start to see uh, some grain. And then by the time you get to that 20, it's, it's really grainy. The one mm -hmm. thing is on this unit, it's a different kind of grain than I'm used to in mm -hmm. digital zoom. And I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's almost... Like when we say grain, we normally mean like the image gets choppy, blocky because yeah, you've zoomed exactly. in on those individual pixels. This actually has a weird grain to it, mm -hmm. almost like a, a grainy old um, photograph, you know, like in the old days of, mm -hmm. of film cameras, you know, it gets that, that film grain. That's kind of what I see in that. So it's different. I don't think it really matters either way. Again, the, the image is mm -hmm going to get worse the more you zoom it up. That's just the way that digital zoom mm. works in any brand and any optic. So that's nothing new. But I think it's your two and a half power, fantastic image. Five power is still really good. Ten power is usable. You get to that 20, it's tough. I mean, you, yeah. you know, that's a lot of magnification on a digital optic. So we're not going to recommend that on, yeah. on really any of these optics. But Absolutely. no, I, I think it's going to fit... Um, I don't know, it doesn't fit everybody, but I think what Han said is, is dead on. And I think I'll end it with this. If you're looking for a small, compact, fantastic, full featured unit, I mean, got all the bells, all the whistles. I don't know of anything that is left off of this from picture in picture, multiple rifles, American defense mount, uh, video, audio, Wi-Fi. It's got it. Fantastic image, low light capabilities. All that in a nutshell, uh, it, again, Han said this, I'm just going to reiterate it. If, if you're shooting close range, if you're sitting on a feeder at 75, 50, maybe 100 yards, I think it's great. I think it'll do you mm -hmm. just fine. I think if you're wanting to get out there and do stuff in the 150, 200, 300, maybe you want to see in that four or 500 yard range but not shoot, you mm -hmm. need to pair it with something like a good sniper hog light, uh, you know, maybe the 66 LRX to really get you out there again. Coyote Cannon, if you're wanting to go a long, long ways, but a good IR light is going to unlock the nighttime potential of this unit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you have questions, if you want to order the Neath and say, man, I've heard enough, Jason and Hans, you've just knocked it out of the park with this review. First of all, thank you. <laughs> second of all, you're I probably... I didn't hear anybody say that, but okay. Yeah, uh, second of all, you're probably uh, in the minority, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, give us a call. And if you say, if you know what you want to get, call up and uh, if Angela or Michaela answer the phone, say, hey, Hans and Jason are the best. I'm ready to order the Neath <laughs> and they can get you taken care of. If you are like 99% of the other people out there that are more confused by this and need some answers to your questions, uh, you can talk to me, you can talk to Ashley, you can talk to Jason, 877-350-1818, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Give us a call. Check it out on the website. We'd love to have your business. Uh, if you want more information, 
uh, about any of the optics that you see, about any of the podcast episodes that you're wondering if we've done a show on this or that, go check out our website, thelatenightvisionshow.com. You can find Jason uh, over on Facebook, uh, over on Instagram and YouTube, Outdoor Legacy. You can find me uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, and on YouTube uh, at Hans, E-T-X, H-A-N-S-E-T-X. Uh, and you can find Ashley over at Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, row underscore ETX. That's R-O-W-E underscore ETX. Uh, he's putting out some uh, information, inf informational videos and some stuff on content on, on the socials as well. Uh, but I'm going to tease this, Jason. Uh, we have got some big, important shows. Stay tuned. Some surprise episodes. And maybe some optics that you've never even heard of before. How about that? That's true. I, I think yep. you are, Stay I, think tuned. You say, I think you say any more and an attorney will be calling. Exactly. So don't exactly say anything right. else. <laughs> yeah, guys stick to the late night vision show. This is your source for the latest information in the thermal and night vision uh, hunting world of optics. Uh, this is where you can get the latest news. And we do have some breaking mm -hmm. news coming uh, in the next uh, few weeks and months. So stick to it, guys. We appreciate y'all watching and listening. We hope you're back here next week at the same time, same channel. Between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.